Good to go. Let's start with Ira. Coach Marvell touched on it. You know, if, if, if they make all their extra points, then they're not in that situation where they have to go to two. Or, you know, Ryan was very steady and has been all season so far. How how pleased have you guys been with Ryan? You know, Ryan's off to a really good start. Um, you know, like it started with how he uh, how he competed in fall camp. I thought he did a really nice job, and um, you know, it's carried over uh, in, into the. The first three games, and you know, I think he's—you can tell—he's he's got some confidence to him in the way he's playing, and he should. You know, co real confidence is earned through, um, you know, what, what what you put out there on the field, and he's been able to to do a good job so far. So, um, you know, we look forward to that continuing. But, but I'm, I've been really pleased uh, with how he started. Chris, the two miscues in the special teams—the sweep kick with Trey, and then Key on having the ball—I don't know if it hit him, but come close to hitting him. Obviously, it's something you guys practice the heck out of. How do you address it? What did you tell them in the moment? And how do you go about correcting it going forward? Well, you know, the, the first one, the, the squib, um, you know, just the whole scenario of how that kind of went down, obviously, was two-score game. I think it was 31-16 at the time. Um, you know, third quarter still, we weren't really thinking to have our hands unit on the field yet. You know, not thinking it was an onside kick scenario. We saw that they were going to attempt an onside kick, called the timeout, and got our unit out there. Um, you know, the, the handling of the squib, you know, it's, it's one of those things that um, obviously you would, would love for that opportunity to have that play back. But, you know, from a coaching standpoint, we got to put our guys in that situation more often, you know, where, where we have those live uh, scenarios. Um, obviously, you know, he did everything that, that he was he was obviously trying to field the ball. Um, you know, we just we got to be better in the moment, and we got to put them in, in more situations like that to, to help them uh, when those situations present themselves. Kelsey? Yeah, Coach Marvell mentioned you guys are close to retraining um, one in the retraining day. Uh, how close do you think you guys are right now to that? Well, you know, I, I think there's pretty good execution, especially in our kickoff return unit. Um, you know, and usually those big plays, you know, are a product of, of all 10 guys doing their job with obviously the returner uh, then doing his. Um, you know, and we're really close. I mean, we're, we're, we're really close to having a, a big play happen there. Um, but, you know, it, it all has to come together for us at the right moment with the right kick. Uh, but but this we will have opportunities in, in both return units uh, if we continue to, to play the way that we've been playing. As well. Is Jared's individual production or his presence and what it does is that the bigger value for you guys right now on defense well you know I, I think um, you know especially early in the season you know Jared's not gonna sneak up on anybody you know and, and uh, you know I, I think teams are, are trying to find ways to to uh, you know whether it's with a running back or a tight end to try to slow him down in terms of the pass rush but his presence in and of itself creates opportunities across the board for the defense and then you know I, I think game one I think you know he, he probably felt like he was getting a little bit frustrated because I think he had that expectation for himself in terms of what he wanted to go accomplish uh, game two and three uh, he just went out and tried to play hard and uh, you know I don't, I don't think Jared's real concerned right now in terms of, of uh, statistical production I know he wants those things to happen everybody does but uh, I think he just wants to focus on playing hard, uh, playing to the best of his ability, because the people who are doing the evaluation on, on him for the next level, they're going to see, you know, uh, his his uh, how hard he's playing, his want to, in terms of, of trying to do everything in his power to, to be successful. Um, and, you know, I, all the numbers will take care of themselves. Of course. Uh, two quick questions on the, on the swim kick to Benson. What did, what did he do wrong? I mean, balls bounce funny. It's, that's why you kick them sideways and they take weird bounces. Did she do something wrong technically? Not, not really. I mean, the only thing that, that I would say is, is when we have a, when we're in a position to get on top of the ball as opposed to try to pick it up, we probably prefer to smother the ball in that that situation. But there, you know, that that's a judgment call in, in the moment by the player um, because the ball needs to be rolling slow enough to to feel like you can just get on top of it. Um, but it, it is the tricky thing, you know. Obviously, the ball, footballs bounce all kinds of different different ways, and um, it's hard to simulate that exact kick at that exact moment in practice. But it's something that we got to put them in, in that situation more often. And on the key on the last punt return, did it hit him? Was there a reason he didn't? 
if you, if you talk to him after yeah. uh, why he didn't rush up and go catch that ball? Um, I think you know, we were in a, in a uh, punt safe setup defensively or on the punt return unit. Um, so we really didn't have anyone protecting. And I, th I feel like he knew that that was the case. You know, there wasn't a return set up with it. Um, and I think he was in between thinking he could go get it and he couldn't. And he, and he, got, he got caught kind of in that in-between mode, um, you know, which is one of those valuable lessons for him as a punt returner, especially in this situation, just get away. Like if you're not 100% sure you can go get it, get away. And if you are convicted that you can, then just go get it. But you can't, you can't live half in and half out. And, and, and he totally understood it. And, and it's going to be something that he's going to be better at moving forward. The way that game was going, what a break that it kicked. It just felt like the way that game was going, it was a kick break in one of their guys. Yes. I was, was very happy I that it kicked out. Uh, you said last week that you know, Castellanos was in your recruiting textbooks. So you were very familiar with him. Um, when you, how different is it? Or I guess Klubnik is athletic. Well, you know, each week is, is kind of its own challenges across the board. You know, I, I think you got to, you know, with, with Cade, you got to have good rush lane discipline. He can run the, with the ball. I don't think they're going to put them in as many quarterback design run situations as maybe the, the we saw in this past week. But, um, you know, we got to be disciplined. We got to be structured in how we rush and, and, and what we do. And, uh, you know, and that's going to be true no matter who you play against. Um, but you know, I think I think Cade's going to present a little bit different uh, issues this week. But but uh, we de certainly have to be disciplined in what we do. As one, you talked about guys not sneaking up on people. I mean, I guess maybe Patrick last year, as a, you know, as a newcomer rookie, um, kind of put the conference on notice. Uh, what have you seen from him in these first three weeks, and how do you plan to kind of manage him and his sort of expectations moving forward? Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, you know, there, Pat does a lot of things. Uh, really well that probably go unseen. Um, you know his his uh, his ability to execute within the defense, um, his ability to uh, play his run structure. Uh, you know his responsibility in the run. Um, you know those are things that always don't show up on, on stat lines. Um, you know, but but Pat does a lot of things out there that that uh, that have showed progress and growth for him as a player. Um, you know, are, are the the flash plays? Are there quite as many as it felt like? Maybe it felt like he, you know, his first year that every game he played in, he made some kind of flash play. But I would also go back and say in the in the LSU game, uh, him batting down that pass on third down was a big play in the game. He had a TFL on this past game, so I, I think those flash plays are there. I just think we probably expect them more now. Um, you know, so uh, Pat just got to keep doing what he's doing. Um, he's got a, a bright future ahead of him, and it just got to be uh, every week persistent uh, growth and, and, and improvement as a player. That's it. I think um, Jerry led, led the um, team in snaps last game, I think it's correct. Um, is that by design or do you guys want to kind of sell them out a little bit more and get more rest? Uh, a little bit of both. Uh, you know, in terms of where just where we were depth-wise uh, going into the last game at, at defensive end, we knew that that uh, you know we we're going to have to some of the guys were going to have to handle some more responsibility in terms of snaps. Um, you know that was already the the game plan that was to play him a little bit more than he had been playing. Um, anyway, um, his snap count got pretty high, uh, and that wasn't totally the plan going in. But the way the game played out, uh, it became a necessity. You know, you get into a situation uh, late in the game where the game was was within two scores there in the, in the last quarter. Um, you know your best players are going to be on the field, and uh, you know, it, and he wanted. And it's a situation where Jared wanted to be on the field, obviously. So um, we're, we're going to do whatever we had to do to win the game. Okay, thanks, coach.